You may be familiar with actor Hill Harper from his appearances on the TV shows CSI New York and City of Angels. Hill has also appeared in three movies Real Black has featured as Philadelphia premieres. With two graduate degrees from Harvard, he is not only one of Independence Films' best actors, but one of America's sharpest minds. I call fear false evidence appearing real. And part of the reason why I'm here is because I'm part of the entertainment business. And what I started to notice as I was speaking to, to young men, young women, and our young people, is that the business that I was a part of was effectively destroying the self-esteem of our youth. It all is a, is a journey in the process, and there's not one point where each piece relates to the, to the next. It wasn't just, okay, social responsibility, I need to do this because I'm this. Because it was creating false evidence that appears real. That's the whole business, that's what we do now. We create false evidence that appears real, and what does it do? It leads to people wanting things that aren't real. You know, whether I was, I'd probably, even if I wasn't an actor, I'd probably be doing something similar. I have a little brother in the Big Brother program. When he's nine years old, he's 14 now, when he was nine, he looked up at me and said, Hill, I can't be happy unless I have a platinum Rolex and a Bentley with 20 inch rims. That's a nine year old. That's the way he was actualizing his happiness. Now don't get me wrong, I have nothing against nice things. I think nice things are great. If you read my book, I love nice things. However, I only believe in nice things if you don't have to go into debt to have them. I don't think it's more about what led. Certainly I could look back and say that my, my grandparents and my parents were, were definitely about helping others and all those things. And I think those things had an effect, but it's, it's a much smaller idea, a much smaller question. It goes to, again, aggressively following intuitive notions. How many of us sit back and say, I don't know what I really want or how I want to go about doing something, so I'm just going to sit here and wait. Rather than really actively listening to our intuition and to the intuitive voices that we all have and say, I'm going to make an affirmative choice, but be malleable enough to, if that choice maybe leads us in a direction that may not be the best, we can make a different choice. And as we put one foot in front of the other, we're able to make different choices down a journey or a path rather than being stagnant and waiting for life to make choices for us. Hey, go marry this dude over me. Shh. Oh, oh, oh. You don't want to do this. I do. I don't. Premium is, is, is a film about a young man played by Dorian Misik who uh, is an actor who it works at a gas station filling up folks with premium gas and Zoe Saldana is his ex-girlfriend who's engaged to my character. They live together, they're engaged and they're about to be married and she bumps into him. And it's just, it's a film about the choices we make in life and the people who we could have or should have perhaps ended up with but for some reason we don't. On the back of my book there's, a, there's an excerpt. Uh, it is from letter number three, being raised by a single parent. And it reads, Dear young brother, it might seem easier to close your eyes and ears and act like you're just passing time, but you're not. Your life's not. It might seem easier to ignore the fact that the choices for your life are yours to make, but get this, not making any choices is making a choice. I live at home with my mom and her boyfriend who I wish she never had. Do you ever think about uh, getting your own place? Ma! Independent film is, is vital to me because it's really the lifeblood of giving new people opportunity to express their voice. I think what hurts most independent films has, is oftentimes, and particularly first time filmmakers, is oftentimes the cast that they end up with. With digital technology, um, people can make more films and, and tell their voice. The, the, the negative side of that is that people who don't deserve or shouldn't be making a film yet are making films. So you see the market flooded with more independent films and then people start, everything gets lumped into a, a category of not being that great. They don't allow their scripts to, to take, to, to be in front. The script is the key. The script is the key. You can, you know, bad actors can take a good script and make it bad. That can happen. But good actors can't take a bad script and make it good. You cannot, you cannot turn water into wine in a film. You just can't do it. And so the script is the key. And that's why I look for great scripts. How can you start talking about the HIV epidemic? How can you start talking about the value of education and foundation building? How can you start talking about having a positive and valuable relationship to money and the way you deal with money? Because all of these are future-based activities and ideas. And if you don't feel that you're worthy of a future, then what do you care about whether the girl gets pregnant or not? It doesn't matter. What do you care if you com commit a crime? Because it doesn't matter. 
the consequences don't matter because you don't feel that you're worthy. And so I felt it was incumbent upon me to spend time figuring out how I could use whatever modicum of platform or voice that I had to counteract that because, because I had to look at myself in the mirror and say, if I'm benefiting in any way from an industry that is involved in this activity, I need to use the same power and influence the industry gives me to try to counteract it. And hopefully, hopefully if I do it effectively, it will show others who have even a bigger voice than I do that they can do the same. I will never do a project that is demeaning to us. Um, but that doesn't mean I won't play ne um, negative roles, so-called negative roles, because as an actor, I want to play diverse roles. And so, you know, someone said to me, they, I heard what you said. You said you never play a negative role. You played a drug dealer in In Too Deep. And I said, you didn't listen to me. I said, the project, you know, it, the example I would use, if, the, if that script ended with me and LL Cool J, he's my boss in it, the drug dealer, with two bottles of Cristal sitting in a hot tub, and it ended with saying, dealing drugs is good. You know, I wouldn't have done it. But it ends with, me and LL go into prison and Omar Epps gets the girl. In the end, he's the good, you know, he's the guy that was doing the right thing for the community. And so, you know, as, as simplistic in, you know, as that movie is, it still sends a subliminal message. So it's more about the project than the role. I've had arguments with Sean Combs, you know, Diddy, <laughs> before, about this very issue. Because I say, Sean, how come you don't ever talk about the fact that you spent two and a half years at Howard University? How come you don't ever talk about the fact that after you left Howard, you went to Andre Harrell at Uptown Records and said, I will work for you for free because I want to learn this skill. Read this. Now listen, this is where we're going here. That's foundation building. And this is the shame of it all. He doesn't use his voice to talk about that journey because it's much better and cooler to say, I went from the corner to the limo overnight. My goals are to continue to develop as an artist and to continue to work with other artists that are committed to, to doing great things. And you know, hopefully by the end of those 20 years, you look back and you say, I have a body of work or a legacy of work that if people played it in a string of, of, of projects, it's something that people can look at and say, wow, that affected me in this way or that affected me in that way. Remember, Hill Harper's new book, Letters to a Young Brother, Manifest Your Destiny, is in stores now, and Real Black will be showcased in premium. His latest film at International House, 3701 Chestnut Street, on Thursday, November 9th, with director Pete Chapman in attendance.